Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I am back to uh, finish off my UI stream from yesterday. So this is kind of like a part two. We got the bulk of the UI done um, in a short, almost five hours. <laughs> uh, but I still wasn't quite able to finish it up. So I wanted to come back. Uh, I was thinking about waiting until next weekend to do it, but I wanted to do it, do it while everything was fresh in my mind. So here I am early on a Sunday morning. I've got to work uh, later this afternoon. So I'm just going to jam this in and finish it up before then. And uh, yeah, so in this video, what we're doing for the follow-up from the previous one is we're going to finish off my OPI keybinds. We're going to finish off uh, adding most of the abilities that I want to add to weak auras. Then we're going to take our UI out and we're going to kind of test it and see where we want to tweak and change things based on actually using it practically. Uh, and then also, as long as I have the time, I am going to um, jump in and show you how I used to set up Bartender when I used it and how you can kind of set it up uh, like this UI or just incorporate it into the UI as well. So that is the game plan. Uh, and yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started since I'm on a little bit of a time crunch. The easiest thing to do here is just set up the rest of my OPI keybinds. So that's what we're going to do real quick. So we're going to jump in here. And like I said before in my previous video, I have um, a really in-depth video on how to use OPI. So... If you would like to use this as well, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I imagine most people will not want to use this. They'll want to use a normal sort of action bar add-on like Bartender. And uh, I'm just going to go through and set this up real quick. You can kind of follow along if you want. Um, but you can also just refer to my in-depth guide on my channel if you want to set this up for yourself. So I've got uh, several different rings here that I'm going to be using. I've got a crowd control ring. And we're going to go in here and add my crowd control abilities to the ring. So we've got disable, got leg sweep, paralysis, uh, spear hand strike. And I think that's pretty much it. <clears throat> so spear hand strike is going to be our primary spell that we want to cast automatically. That's our interrupt. And then after that, I just kind of do them based on a uh, cooldown. So we'll do something kind of like that. All right, so that's our CC ring. Then we have the offense ring. And actually, we do E on this one. This is where we're going to put our like big offensive cooldowns. Uh, the stuff that generally is going to have more than 30 second cooldown uh, to it. So like Fist of the White Tiger, we won't put in there. Um, but we will put like our Zwin White Tiger. Uh, what else do we have? Our Storm, Earth, and Fire. Touch of Death. Touch of Karma is kind of so-so because you redirect some damage, but I use it more as a defensive ability, so I won't add it to this one. I think that's pretty much all we need. So uh, the one we're going to use the most often is going to be Storm, Earth, and Fire. So that one's going to go at the top. And then we'll have our uh, Tiger and Touch of Death. Uh, with Touch of Death... Okay, that's the new changes. It'll reset, uh, I think, if we kill something. But that's not implemented into the game yet, so uh, we're good with this right here. Next, we have defense. So we're going to put our defensive big cooldowns in here. Chi Burst is going to go somewhere. It's probably going to go in our offensive cooldowns, honestly. But we'll add it in there later. Or maybe we'll stick it in the utility. Uh, the utility one. So for defense, we are going to put in our... Touch of Karma. And we'll throw Vivify in there. And 
And I think that's all I have at the moment. I think I am super, super duper offense right now. Uh, so we'll put Vivify in there so we can like quick heal ourselves as we need to. And next up, we're going to do our utility ring. So this is where I put all the like movement abilities and additional stuff in there. So like Chi Burst could go in here, but I do think I am going to put that in the offensive one. It's got a 30 second cooldown, so it's pretty quick, but we I already have my primary ring filled up with abilities. So I think I'm just going to toss it in there, but we'll put Chi Torpedo in here, Crackling Jade Lightning. Um, we're going to put our Flying Serpent Kick in there. And that might be everything. I think I need to add a Spinning Crane Kick in probably probably into the... No, I'll add it into Utility. And that's it. So for all these, we want to make sure that our Chi Torpedo is the main skill, which it already is. I like to put my movement skill there. And then we just kind of set up these other ones however we want. I like to put my uh, Flying Serpent Kick over this way. And then uh, the rest of this looks pretty good. Jump into our Miscellaneous. So this is where we put all the oddball spells that I may or may not want to use at times. Uh, so this is where stuff like Detox will go. Uh, we'll also put Provoke in there, Resuscitate. And we could put our Transcendence and Transcendence Transfer, but I almost never use that ability. So I don't even know if I care about putting it in there. I don't think I do. So for this one, Mount is always the main ability. The rest of these don't really matter too much. Um, I'll stick Provoke right here, just in case I do randomly want to use it. So let's pop back over to the offensive, and we're going to add in Chi Burst. We're actually going to make this the main ability, since it has such a short cooldown. Uh, actually, I think we're going to add in Fist of the White Tiger, make this the main ability. Uh, no, no, I want to keep, that's right. I want to keep Fist of the White Tiger in the main one, but I want to add Spinning Crane Kick to this one. So we're going to have Chi Burst as the main spell. And then we've got Storm, Earth, Fire, White Tiger, Touch of Death, and we do have Spinning Crane Kick if we need it. That's fine. So... Also, on our defensive one, we want to add our racial ability, Gift of the Naru. And that one has a three-minute cooldown, so it's good where it is. And I think that's it. We got defense. We got our core. Offense. Utility. CC. And miscellaneous. Cool. So that's Opi all set up. That's kind of what we need to go out and be able to test out uh, the UI. So that's all set up. So next thing we'll do is we'll come down here and we will update uh, the rest of our weak auras with basically just those abilities for the most part. I kind of like to have a starting point with weak auras and then build upon it from there. Okay, so we're going back into weak auras. Uh, picking up from the previous video, we've got four groups of auras. We've got our buffs, cooldowns, our main bar, and our on-use abilities. So what we're going to do is go into each of those and go to load, and we're going to switch these back so that they will always show up so that we can continue to edit them. And this, for the most part, should be pretty straightforward. What we're going to do is drag this over here. We're going to open up our spell book and we're just going to go through our spell book and decide what we want to add and where it should go. So like blackout kick, we're not going to add because um, we're not really worried about that. You just get into the habit of your like core rotation abilities. You just kind of get into the rhythm of how you uh, press them. And I think they're pretty easy to track just kind of on their own. Um, we will want to put like Chi Burst in there to our abilities that we want to use uh, whenever they're available so we can maximize the amount of uh, damage we're getting from those. So in the use 
uh, section here, we're going to add Chi Burst. So all we're going to do is copy one of our existing ones. Add Chi Burst. And then we're going to go into Trigger. And we're going to change the spell to Chi Burst. And hit OK. So that's going to be added into this one. Chi Torpedo, we are tracking on the main bar right here, tracking our stacks. One thing I do want to make sure we have is on the uh, text, I want to make sure that we are showing stacks, and we are. We have the percent %S, which means it'll show the number of stacks uh, on the icon itself. Crackling Jade Lightning, I am not worried about tracking, <clears throat> not worried about detox or disable. Uh, Fist of the White Tiger, we've got that in our on use, so we're good there. Fist of Fury, we added to our on use, and we changed the condition, so or the trigger, so that if the action is usable, it will show up. And basically what that does is it makes sure that we have the three chi that we need to use Fist of Fury uh, before it puts it off to the side. Uh, Flying Serpent Kick, I do want to track on the main bar. It's a movement ability that I like to use as much as possible, so I do want to know when it's ready to go. So I'm just going to... Uh, I'm actually going to replace Disable, which I totally misspelled. <clears throat> so we're going to do Flying Serpent Kick. Uh, quick tip, once you type it in once... You can just copy it, and then that way, when you go over to spell, you can just paste it in. So we got our Flying Serpent Kick. Uh, Invokes Win is over here on our big cooldowns area. So is Leg Sweep. Uh, Paralysis, I'm not worried about tracking. Provoke, Resuscitate, not worried about those either. Uh, Rising Sun Kick is just going to be part of the normal rotation. Uh, that I'm going to get used to doing. Spear hand strike. I do like to keep track of my CCs so that I know when I can use them. So we're going to add that here. Spear hand strike. And then we're just going to swap out the spell. Hit OK. All right, so we're tracking that one. Uh, spinning crane kick. Uh, I'm not too worried about that one. Storm, earth, and fire. We're going to add into our cooldowns. So we're going to copy this one. And swap out the spell. Okay. Tiger Palm, not worried about. Touch of Death and Touch of Karma, I do want to add to the cooldowns. All right, and then Transcendence and Vivify, I'm not worried about. Whirling Dragon Punch, um, this one I do like to keep track of, and we have it in the use, on use abilities. So I think that's probably all we really need to worry about in terms of the actual abilities that we want to show up uh, for right now. What we might want to check for is to check and see if there are any important buffs that we don't have up. So for example, um, we get a buff. Let's see. What are we getting buffs from? I think mainly we're just getting buffs. We get Storm, Earth, and Fire. Uh, we could do Touch of Karma as another buff. So let's do this one. And remember, you can't have duplicate names. So since we have Touch of Karma here, we need to distinguish this by calling it Touch of Karma 
buff or whatever uh, you come up with. They just can't be the same. And then we're going to go in here and change this to Touch of Karma. We could also set up Touch of Death as well if we wanted to, uh, to kind of show how long that is. But that's going to be taken care of by our... Um, our and I can't even think of the word. The uh, plates, the name plates for the enemies. We're going to see the buff above there. So I'm not too worried about that one either. And I think that honestly is probably going to cover it. Yeah, I think that does it for the most part. We could double check uh, and look in our general skills to find out if we have um, any like racial abilities that possibly have a uh, buff or anything like Gift of the Naru. It's not really a buff that we're worried about. You know, it is a heal over time. So if we wanted to track that, we could add that to our buffs as well. But I don't really think that we need to add it in there. OK. So the next thing that I want to do really quick is kind of adjust the look of some of these. So I think I'm good with the buffs. I don't really like the color that's being used, the red color. So I want to see if I can change that color. Let's see if we can figure out there it is the bar settings i don't think we can change that at the oh we can change that at the group level good uh so usually what i try to do is i pick uh something pretty close to the actual class color and that's what i like to use so now those bars will match the rest of the ui and not just be big red and ugly <laughs> will these streams be available as vods yes absolutely the first one is already up on the channel um, and this one will be a VOD as well when I'm done. Okay, so we've got the buffs kind of sorted out there. I like that. We're going to collapse this, just kind of indicate that we're done. Uh, let's pop over to our on use abilities. I kind of want to make these a little bit bigger. I think. Not huge, but I think something like that might be a little bit better. Now the question is, are we overlapping with our buffs? So we're gonna wanna find out. So all we really need to do is pop in and we can use Storm Earth Fire. And no, that looks pretty good. Storm Earth Fire is the top. So we're good to go here. We can come over here. Like our Chi Torpedo. Uh, where did we put? Okay, we put our And let's see, we've got Touch of Death we could use. And let's try our Touch of Karma. Yep, that works as well. So we've got Touch of Karma going over here. This is telling us we uh, can use our uh, Whirling Dragon Punch, but we really, we can't. So I think I actually want to update. She burst. I think I actually want to update this one so that it only shows when I'm able to use it like the rest of them do. So we're going to go into on use. We're going to go to whirling dragon punch. We're going to go over to conditions. Uh, spell usable false. That is a weird condition. Oh, it's uh, it's kind of blueing it out, which is irrelevant because we don't want it to show up when it's not usable. So we can actually just cut that off and come back over here and status cooldown progress is not what we want. We want uh, status action usable. OK, and that should pretty much do it. So now it'll go away because we can't actually use whirling dragon punch. We have to meet the conditions first. Uh, which is Fist of Fury and Rising Sun Kick both have to be on cooldown. So if we come over here and uh, let's just fight one of these, let's see if we can get our Fist of Fury. So let's do that. We can Rising Sun Kick and there's our Whirling Dragon Punch.
So that's like all the abilities we can use right there. That's letting me know like, hey, there's nothing that's available for you to use that isn't part of like your core rotation right now. So don't worry about it. Just focus on doing your core rotation. And then this pops up and goes, hey, you can use Fist of Fury again. So you can modify and change this as you go. So I might be out there fighting stuff and I realize like, ah, crap, you know, I really do want to know every time I can use this ability because as I'm playing, uh, I'm missing out. Like it, it would help me to add it over here. And then all you have to do is go back into weak ours and just add that ability uh, there. So I like the way this side is looking. Uh, so we're good on the use here. I'm not crazy about the cooldowns right now. I think they're a little too big. I don't like the big stack that we have going on here. So we're going to go back over to group and we are going to go to display. We're going to tweak these down, I think, to maybe 25. Like, we'll, we'll make these a little bit smaller. And what I want to do is I want to make them wrap. So let's go over to group. Okay, they're going to grow down. Which is fine. And then we want to place a limit on them. So let's change the limit to like three. Uh, uh, no, we don't want the limit. We want them to wrap. And I believe there's a way we can have them wrap. I just have to remember what it is. It's not limit. Maybe I'm crazy. I believe there's a way to do it, but I'm not finding it right this second. We don't want to stagger it. We don't really want to change the spacing. Not worry about grouping by frame. Yeah, so limit will just make it so that it doesn't show everything, which I don't particularly want. Okay, that's fine. We'll come back around to it. I did want to make the icon smaller, though, uh, which I we're good on that. So that way they don't take up quite as much screen real estate. And yeah, we'll leave them there for now. We'll leave them there for now. I don't pull this stuff in closer because there are little UI notifications that Blizzard puts next to your character. And I want to make sure that those are able to um, function the way that they should. And then the last little group for us to take a look at is the little main bar here. And I think I want to boost the size of these as well. So we're going to jump back in and we're going to up these. Let's try 30. Mm, it's a little too big. Let's do 25. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Okay, so that is basically our week or a setup the way that we want them to be and uh we're good that's all of our abilities in there some classes you're gonna have way more abilities than this this is pretty straightforward on windwalker monk uh i think quite a few of my talents are actually well no i've got a lot of the active talents so i just have less skills to put uh on my warrior for example there are like Eight, I think, eight abilities on my Protection Warrior that I, I like having here glowing. So what we're going to do is go back in, and, and now that we kind of have these set up and all the abilities added, we're going to go back over to Load, and we're just going to switch everything back to In Combat. Okay, so now everything goes away just the way we intended, and as soon as we get into combat, everything will pop back up. And we can see all the various abilities that we want to use. Hit him. Okay. 
I think I kind of do want Rising Sun Kick in there. Just so, because that leads into my Whirling Dragon Punch. So that's one of those things where, like I said, you go out, you use it, and you figure out, you know what, I think I do want that to show. So all we're going to do is uh, duplicate. Uh, we're going to duplicate Whirling Dragon Punch. Do Rising Sun Kick. And then over in Trigger, we're going to update that spell. And there we go. So now we get back over here and let's get back into combat. We've got rising sun kick. Boom. Got our chi burst. Fist of fury. Rolling dragon punch. Fist of the white tiger, rising sun kick. And you can kind of see how just having that little, uh, that layout of the abilities that are there can kind of keep you on the top of like, oh, yep, I should rising sun kick because I'm able to now. And obviously figuring out your rotation and when you actually want to use those abilities is part of that. You don't necessarily want to hit them every single time they pop up like that, but it is just a really nice way to make sure that you are like using those abilities that you can use basically every 30 seconds. Um, so you can see there, it's it's so simple. And that's like, I don't even need to look at my uh, action bars that I would have down here to be like, oh, can I use that ability? Because it just pops up and it flashes and goes, hey, use me. And at the same time, when I'm down here, I can look over this way and go, oh, hey, you know, I want to use my leg sweep. And then I'm tracking the cooldown on leg sweep so I know when it's coming back again. And this is just kind of like what I like to do uh, with my UI for weak auras. And then also I can like cheat torpedo out of here and keep track of that. I can flying serpent kick and, uh, have that one tracked as well. Now I will say that, let's see for the main action bar down there, the main, the load in combat. It's kind of, it can be good or bad depending on what you're tracking. Like right there, maybe I want to keep track of the Chi Torpedo um, stuff, even though I'm not in combat because you use Chi Torpedo a lot or roll or whatever when you're not in combat. And maybe you just want to track the stacks. Maybe you don't care because you're not really worried. You're just going to use one whenever you, you have one. So the bar down here is one you may want to consider having turned on even when you're not in combat but it's kind of up to you it really depends on what you have uh there i know i have like two different movement abilities on my warrior that are down there i have charge or intercept and i also have oh what's it called the leap uh the jump and both of those depending on your talent layout can have charges and so i like to have those up like all the time to constantly see like what ability I can use and when and because those are used in different situations and I don't like constantly just spam them all the time uh, I'd like to have them visible but on my monk like honestly I just like cheat torpedo every single time that I can and if I can't cheat torpedo then I use the flying serpent kick you know and I just kind of like chain these over and over again and I don't really care about tracking the cooldowns on them so much when I'm outside of combat because I just spam them anyway. So uh, that's something to take into consideration. Okay, so that has uh, Opi set up. That's got my weak auras in there with some of the different abilities uh, in there as well. So the next thing I wanna do is run through the list of add-ons in our add-on manager and just kind of make sure that we have kind of squared away everything that we need to then we're going to go out and we're going to like kill some stuff, test some stuff and see what things we want to change. In particular, I'm going to be looking pretty hard at the nameplates to see what I want to change in there. Uh, also, we're going to want to uh, tweak and possibly update uh, some of our other um, uh, character like plates and party plates and stuff. So we're going to save um, the nameplates and we're going to save shadowed unit frames uh, for a little bit later. But the rest of the add-ons, uh, we're going to go through and just double check and make sure we kind of polished them up.
So control panel, interface options, we're good. Arc inventory, we basically have that sorted out. I showcased that yesterday. So uh, this is a really complex, but awesome, useful bag add-on. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, one of the things that turned me off from it is I had a hard time figuring out how to customize it to get it to match the rest of my UI. Um, but I kind of got that figured out now, so I really like it now. Uh, Aurora, we're good. Basic minimap. That's also good. There is a consideration um, that I realized I kind of screwed up on a little bit yesterday, which is in basic minimap the text here for the zone. I actually don't put it between the clock and the coordinates. I actually move it up a little bit. So I'll try like 210. Let's try negative 200. Yeah, so I actually put it more like right there. And the reason for this, for putting it right inside is because sometimes the text for the zone is longer than trade winds market and then it'll bleed into the clock and the coordinates which i don't want it to do so i actually like to put it right above so that's the only real change i have for basic mini maps so let's see update on that one cursor trail we're good character stats good e-line yep experiencer we're good down here uh immersive we're good to go on that one uh, so immersive did bring up uh, a couple of things. So first off, you're going to see down here when I hover over stuff, you can still see like the mini bar hovers and you can still see like the bag hovers and that's going to get really annoying. So what I want to do is go in to move anything and I want to come in and I want to uh, hide like the bag buttons. So now the bags won't show up. You can see down here my like uh, the menu, the like micro menu is showing up. And I believe for this one, I had to do a little custom thing like I did before. So this one is. Want this whole frame here. So this is micro button and bags bar. So we want to hide this. So we're going to use the same hide command as we did before. We're going to do slash hide. And we're going to type it exactly as it shows up. Micro button and bags bar. And now we go down here and oh, it's still wanting to show up. Okay, so maybe. Did I type it wrong? Micro button and bags bar. Is it buttons? No, I got it. So let's see. Shop store micro button. Micro button and bags bar. That's what we have. Okay, so that got it to go away, but it didn't stop the hover. Let's double check and make sure the bags are gone as well. So the bags are gone, so we need to hide something else. Do we actually need to hide the individual like shop button and stuff? Okay, so this is main menu micro button. It doesn't seem to matter. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, it's not letting me hide. Interesting. Okay, well, I guess those hovers are going to be there regardless. Unless I'm missing something that I can change here. Well, let's double check in here. Action bars were good. Bags, we hit the bag buttons, which is what we wanted. So we're not worried about bags. Bank and void storage, bottom bar. Okay, let's hide the micro menu. Okay, so micro menu was in here and that took care of it. So we didn't actually need to do uh, either one of these. Okay, 
So I can leave them in there, that's totally fine, but now the micro menu buttons are gone. When we hover down here, we don't get any of that hover. Uh, the other place, yeah. See, we're getting some hovers down here too, which means we wanna go into action bars and make sure that we uh, hide. The action bar, bottom left, bottom right, right, uh, action bar two. That should cover it. Oh, we're still... Still got one of them that we're hitting. Oh, yeah, the main one. Okay. So now all those hovers are gone. And then the other hover that we're going to want is the buffs hover. So right here, you can see guild champion is still showing up there. So we're going to want to find our buffs. And the, getting into move anything and trying to find stuff is uh, it's a task. It's not an info panel. I think... It player... Okay, player buffs default. Yep, that got rid of it. Okay, so now all these random hovers are gone, so you won't be like over here trying to do something and hovering over your micro bags, even though you can't actually see them. Uh, so that is really all we need to take care of for move anything. Everything else on the screen now should be good to go. Jump back into our add-ons. Okay. Kaliel's tracker. So for this one, there's one thing I want to make an adjustment to, and that is the Y offset is a little bit higher than our mini map. So I wanted to tweak that. That looks about right. Tick the box under hide. Oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> As you can see, it didn't really work, and uh, all it you know took was me finding the right thing in the actual menu. Sometimes the stuff's in there, sometimes it's not. Uh, sometimes it's easier to do the slash hide and just be done with it. Um, but in that case, it was a mix of both. So, uh, so yeah, we're lined up on our Caliel's tracker, which is good to go. Uh, I believe I want to double check and make sure we updated the font on Caliel's tracker. Uh, nope. Gonna make that Doris. I think we only need to change it there. Okay. So that's the right font. Uh, basic minimap should be the right font already. I believe I changed that. Doris, Doris, Doris. Yep. Leatrix, so we haven't done anything with Leatrix. So uh, we're gonna go into Leatrix maps and we want to just go ahead and leave all these checked. This is pretty much it. Show unexplored areas, show dungeons of rage, show coordinates, show mini map button, blah, blah, blah. You can unlock the map frame if you want. Well, we can do this with move anything and I'm not really worried about moving the map frame, but if you wanted to move it, you definitely could. And then over in Leatrix Plus, uh, we're going to go. So for system, we can max camera zoom. I like this. This lets you zoom your camera out uh, farther than you're, you're normally allowed to. Uh, in game options, I like uh, faster movie skip. This will just let you skip a movie without confirmation. So you don't have to hit, OK, I want to skip. That's kind of up to you. Uh, if I'm playing through on a second character, I definitely like having this on. If I'm playing through the first time, I'll usually turn this off just to make sure I don't accidentally skip videos um, during uh, the leveling process and while I'm questing. Uh, 
Faster auto loot is definitely awesome. This makes it so that you right click and that's like it. There's you barely see a window pop up or anything else like that. Um, if you disable loot warnings, this is going to get rid of uh, the confirmation when you choose a loot roll option or try to sell or mail a tradable item uh, that can be useful as well. Uh, the disable bag automation changes when your bags are like it disables the auto open and close, but we're controlling that through our bag add on anyway, so we don't really need to mess with that one. For the most part, I think these are the ones that uh, I like uh, to check in system. And we need to reload for these to take effect. Sure, this is a question you can't answer right now, but can you show me how to change the background in Tiny Tooltip? Uh, I did go over that in the previous video, but I will uh, go over it again once we get to Tiny Tooltip on the list. I'll definitely show you how to do that. Okay, popping back into Leatrix. Uh, for the most part, I think the rest of everything else in here, this is all just kind of personal preference stuff. Um, visibility, like hide the Griffins, hide the sand bar, all that kind of stuff we've already done. Uh, oh, come on. One of our bars came back and move anything. So we'll have to go back in and make sure that's still checked. Uh, so the rest of this stuff, I think we take care of through other add-ons. Um, and you can go through and kind of figure out what you want to do for that one. All right, mask, mini map, button frame. Uh, we kind of covered this one. I think I'm going to stick. I did want to check. Uh, I did want to check mini map, button frame, and see if I liked the blizzard square a little bit better. I don't know. I need to see if they have mask for this thing because I don't really like any of the buttons all that much. Uh, it's like a super picky thing, but I think I'm going to leave it on Blizzard Square just because it's not as like glaringly white over there. So that's all I needed to do on that one. Uh, Mount Journal, we're fine. Move anything. We're going to see which of our action bars fell off there okay so bottom left bottom right 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 to main they're all there i don't know why this one is uh still showing up let's see Multi bar bottom left. Okay, let's try a command for this one. Multi, oh, slash hide, not high. Multi bar bottom left. Okay, let's see if it worked. It did not. Okay, that just seems like some kind of a... There we go. That's weird. Oh, well, we know where to check these things if for some reason it gives us an issue, which uh, this one did. Huh. Yeah, it just looks like some kind of a bug or something. Our buffs are still gone. All this stuff is still gone. So, yeah, it just looks like a weird action bar thing. Okay. That's an easy enough fix. Plus, move anything is right here, and you can just bloop and go back in and fix it. 
All right, neat plates, we're skipping for now. Opine, mass, we're good. Pawn, we're good. Postal, nothing really to check out there. Pratt, uh, so this does bring me to one thing for the chat. That is, we need to make sure that the chat is above our tooltip. <clears throat> so we set up our tooltips so that when we hover over something, it just kind of shows right where it is. But during combat, it's going to pop back into the bottom right. So we want to make sure that when that happens, our chat is uh, not covering up that tooltip. So we need to give ourselves a little bit of a gap. We can also... We can also go into tiny tooltip. And let's see. I think we're, I think we're good. Okay. So we're hovering here and we just want to make sure that we give ourselves see if we can adjust the camera angle and kind of line this up. It's kind of a funky way to do it, but so now we're basically on this rock right here. So we can drag this over and put our chat like right there. And then our chat should not get in the way of our tooltip. Whenever it's down there. Okay, so that was all I really wanted to mess with for chat. For uh, Pratt. Shattered unit frames we're going to take a look at here in a minute. Storyline. The other only thing we want to do with storyline is make sure we actually have it in the position that we want it now. And this is really just personal preference. And we can actually just pull this up by talking to any of these guards. Um, I usually like to have it like up over in this corner so I can still see what's going on in the center of the screen. And I just kind of look up here and, and do the story stuff anyway. And also like most of my other stuff is center screen or off to the right. So this is a pretty open spot. The only time it's not open is potentially when I'm doing like dungeons and stuff like that. But we're going to move our party frames around and everything else anyway. So we'll just stick that there. Uh, so tiny tooltip, changing the background. Okay, so BG file is what you want. So go to tiny tooltip. Under tiny tooltip general, BG file is going to change the background. So let me find a person. Can I move this window? I cannot. Okay, so right now... It's like cosmic debris or whatever. I have it set to alpha. Uh, I think it's on like something ridiculous normally. And then background. Yeah, that's all I did before was just change this to alpha and it worked. Right, and then here's the other one. So like player, if you go in player background, it'll also kind of screw up the alpha. So like this will make it class color. And I changed this so that it would go to default. And the default is just the alpha. And I don't remember, I think it was on like class by default. But it, it, it was on like class, but then it also had uh, a texture behind it. So just change the tooltip to default, which it should be default for, I think, everything. Like it should be default for NPCs. You have to change it to default for players and then make sure that the BG file is alpha. And then you can set the background color here. I just left it the way it is. So it's kind of a just a semi-transparent. 
and I kept the border class colored and that's kind of like your indicator, the border color and the name color. Yeah, so name is set to class and those kind of show you like that dude's a warrior. Warrior. Death Knight, Shaman, etc. So that should get you sorted on the tooltip. And weak auras, we're good to go. World quest list, I'm not really worried about that right now. So, uh, cast bar, that is the other thing that we want to add in here. Because we have a cast bar in shadowed unit frames. And so I'll show you that one. So if we're here and we go to shadowed unit frames uh, for player bars, cast bar, we can enable a cast bar. Um, and this one, if we t were to do uh, our crackling jade lightning, you can see it adds a cast bar here. There's also a cast bar down here, which is the typical blizzard one, I believe. Uh, let's double check that and make sure. Close. So we have, yeah, this is the default blizzard one. So you can add your cast bar underneath your character if you want to. I actually have an add on ACB cast bar as cast bar is what it's called. And the ACB is just part of it. And it kind of depends if you're on a class that doesn't use a lot of cast, like Windwalker Monk doesn't actually use a cast bar that much, then you might just use the shadowed unit frames one and call it good. But if you're on one that uses a lot of casts, then I really like uh, this one here. So this is as cast bar. And that slash command did not work. So I got to find it. Okay. Slash ACB. These are our cast bar options. Um, so you have a lot more options as to what you can do uh, within um with your cast bar in here. So player, we're good to go. There's nothing crazy in here. You can change like your various like name label. So right now it shows it. If you take it off, it doesn't show the spell. Uh, the font face, we're going to go ahead and Doris it up. Yeah, hit the wrong button. Go me. All right, so we got our font in there, font flags. Uh, these are just outlines if you want them. I don't like outlines, so I'm good. Uh, you can change your font size. You can change the alignment. So we're aligned left right now. You can change the color of the font, and you can offset the label as well if you want to. If you go edit mode, that'll just show you uh, your options. So let's say uh, I don't want to mess with the color. Um, if I wanted to change the offset of the label, I could do that and put it somewhere else. Like if I wanted it above the cast bar for whatever reason, I could do that. But I pretty much like the defaults. Um, time label, it's the same thing. You could change the, uh, you could change it to total duration. So it shows how much out of the total cast time uh, you're actually gonna be using the ability. You can, once again, change the font. Flag size, alignment, all that kind of good stuff. Appearance. So this is where you can change your uh, texture for your bar. Uh, there are different ones in here. I honestly do really like the default one, the waterline. I think it's pretty cool. We could change it to KT flat. Uh, we could do something like aluminum. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just find one that you think looks cool. 
So like I said, I personally, I like the water line. I might go through and like look at other ones and see if there's one I like better, but I like that one well enough. Um, you can also change the tile and the texture. So you can change it to horizontal or vertical. Uh, you can use the bar textures, background texture. You can change the background color. Uh, and then the backdrop background is this stuff here. I don't know. I just think this one looks really good uh, by default out the gate. And also, it did not save my change. Okay. I don't... <laughs> I don't want the the label of my spell to be up above there. Uh, so position is the other thing that you might want to uh, tweak. So for me, I might want to push this down a little bit. So my bottom offset, let's go into edit mode. And I might want to push. Let's, uh, reset. So we're at 441. So let's say I wanted to go down by 50. Make it 491. Oh, the other way, I guess. 391. Okay, then what I want to do is go into these and drop these down by 50 as well. So this one is going to be... 5. Or, no, the other way. Uh, 355. 329. 3. And mirror is kind of whatever. I don't even know when this one comes into play. Uh, but that way, everything kind of shifts down a little bit. And uh, now I don't have overlapping bars. Because you will get that. Because this will show, like, if your target is casting abilities, it'll show them here too. If you want it to. Uh, so going back over to players, so we've changed the position a little bit there. We could change the anchor. Uh, this just has to do with the positioning as well. And then we can get into additional. You can show spell rank, change your normal cast color. So like I might tweak this and make it monk colored. A okay, failed, interrupted, uninterruptible, etc., etc. I think that's pretty good to go. So now when I cast. I've got my nifty little monk cast bar there. And it shifted down a little bit. So like I said, on um, the Windwalker monk, like there's not a lot of stuff that I need a cast bar for. So it may just be the case that just going into shadowed unit frames and going into player, bars, cast bar, and hitting enable and just using the basic uh, options they have here is good enough. Um, but I don't know. I, I like this cast bar. I like the customization. I know I can move it around, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So I don't mind hanging on to this one. All right, so that is as cast bar. Uh, that kind of gets that good to go for us. Uh, appearance tooltip I showed off. It's not super important. Uh, bag non and bag brother uh, and baud bag. Those were all shown off. Uh, as part of the bag stuff for the previous um, stream. I do have Narcissist. This isn't really a... So I have a list of add-ons that are kind of supplemental that I just have for fun for what I do. And the majority of them I'm not showing in these streams because it's just kind of overkill. But everybody loves Narcissist when they see it. So I wanted to include it here. Uh, basically, with Narcissist, you can... Come in and get like crazy cool camera views of your character. And there's all sorts of stuff that you can do with this. Uh, you can get in and actually take screenshots of your character. You can uh, like right here. You can move the model. There's a bunch of stuff down here in the corner that will let you like change the lighting. Uh, you can also, like, hold your weapon. Uh, you can uh, change the stance. You can have an animation. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's actually pretty insane. 
Um, I'm not going to get too much into this right now, but I'll tell you to check out Narcissus. I'll have a video on this at some point. Uh, going into it a little bit better because I use it to take screenshots of my characters for thumbnails, actually. What's the add-on for the nameplate? Uh, that is the nameplate. This one here, this is uh, neat plates is what I'm using. And we're actually going to go customize this a little bit more. Nice to have someone to watch who loves add-ons like I do. Yeah, you know, I really got into add-ons. I mean, I got into add-ons in vanilla. There weren't a lot of them. Oh, there were some. Good old Thoughtbot. I can't even remember. Like, it's been so long. I don't remember if there was a Thoughtbot add-on. I, like, I'm... I'm thinking maybe there was like a quest ID, like it wasn't ThoughtBot itself, but it would give you the ID or something so you could look it up on ThoughtBot. But I could be totally wrong. Okay, so we're pretty solid here. We're gonna go out and we're going to uh, fight some stuff and we're going to test out our UI and just see where we wanna modify our unit frames our nameplates and if we want to make any adjustments to like our weak auras and stuff like that so we will just go over here to brendan dam don't forget to like the video if you're enjoying it subscribe to the channel if you want more add-on videos live streams class guides Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Oh man, that one hit me wrong. I'm uh, I've got chili roasted pistachios. It's like my stream snack. They're not overly intrusive, but that one that one hit me wrong. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, most of the content that I'm going to be making on the channel for the foreseeable future is going to be about World of Warcraft and Legends of Runeterra. I tried the indie game stuff for a while and I enjoyed it, but I think I'm only going to be doing indie game content for games that I'm actually like really, really pumped about and not just random oddball ones all the time. Okay, so I really want to go off. Not over here. I want to go kill some pigs or something. I think maybe we'll fight these things since they are neutral and we can just kind of grab them as we want to. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into... Eight plates. And I can't move this window, which is so awesome. Thank you, neat plates. <laughs> okay, so we kind of went through some of this yesterday. Um, and we're going to get in and do a little bit more. So we can disable cast bars if we want to. We may or may not want to do that. We have a cast bar already. So let's go see. Let's check that out first. See if we can get someone with a cast bar. I don't know if these guys will cast anything, but let's find out. We're going to sit here and just kind of try to stay alive. See if this guy will cast anything. I can tell already I'm not crazy about the random red backdrop that shows up. I also don't think I want the combat text on my character frame. Okay, I don't think this guy's gonna cast anything. So we're just gonna murder him. Okay, so right there, I know I don't want combat text on my player bar. So I wanna get rid of that. Let's see, health bar. I 
I saw that yesterday, but I don't remember where it was. And I don't think it's this one. So player, general, combat text. Yeah, let's get rid of that. We could offset it and put it down, but honestly, if I want combat text, I'm just going to get a combat text add-on. So we'll take that off. And then the other thing that I wasn't digging with the plates here was I didn't like the little overlay. So let's go health bar view, enemy color, name, status text, subtext, that's fine. Buffs and debuffs we want. So I don't know if it's this tug of threat indicator. Maybe that is what it is. Yeah, let's see if that's what it is. The tug of threat indicator. All right, let's go attack another one. It's not that. Oh, let's see. What could it be? We don't have range indicator on. We want elite. We want personal resources on target. I don't know. I don't think it's the style. We changed this to like Blizzard. Oh, it is the style. Maybe it's like the glow. All right, just, just got no health left. Just die. Okay, so maybe it is the style. But it, yeah, it is adding like a glow though. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. Enemy health bars. Enemy bar color by threat. I'm gonna do by health. Name color white, status none, subtext none. Headline view, enemy headline color by reaction. Okay, that's probably what it is. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, we don't want by health. We do want by reaction to let us know like, hey, this guy is neutral. Enable aura widget, which we do want. Debuffs, we want to show mine. Buffs, I don't really care about that. We can turn that on if that becomes a thing. Uh, let's go aura scale. I think we want to... Drop this down. They're a little bit big right now. Let's try like a 70. Yeah, I guess 74 is as close as I'm going to get it. Icon style. We can do wide for right now with the scale turned down to see how that looks. Uh, include dispellable debuffs on friendly units is good if you're healing or like in the case of me being a monk. I do have detox, so poison and disease. I could enable this and get rid of curse and magic, and then that way I'll see a poison or disease pop up, and I can 
I can uh, detox that stuff. Let's go. Let's turn off the enemy spotlight mode. Come here. Okay. Yeah, I think these are a little bit better. Like, they're not so darn big. Okay. I'm pretty much I'm pretty much fine with uh, the plates like that. Only thing I don't love is the little red thing above them, but like I said, that can be changed. And I think we do actually want that the highlight we turned off. I think we do want that on. Gonna die, touch of karma. Don't care about range indicator, cast bars, fine. What was this on health bar? I can't remember. Oh, enemy spotlight mode was by threat. That's what it was. And then we had this. Okay, that should do it. I think that should go back to changing this to red. Oh, no, it didn't. That's fine. Yeah, I think adjusting these icons here, that's pretty good. I need to find something that uses a cast bar. There are some mages uh, off to the west. Maybe we could check those out. No, I can't fly, okay? I don't have pathfinding <laughs> for, for Battle for Azeroth. Hmm, yeah, that was something annoying that I wanted to get rid of. That is coming from World Quest add-ons which I know you can't see, so I'll pull it over here. Okay, I don't want the LFG search. That's basically, I think that should get rid of what just happened. Oh, maybe the, uh, maybe the, they're to the north. I mean, I could do a I could do a world quest while I was out here. Get away from me! Love monk. <laughs> it's like goodbye. I am out of here. Okay. Yep. So the world quests like pop up from world quest add-ons is gone. And what do we have to do? I want to, so let's go into here. Modules. I want world quest to be at the top because that's actually what I give a crap about right now. Okay, so pilot the repaired farm hand. Ah, this is going to be another good example of how you have to uh, adjust some things. So one of the things that we did was we hid the vehicle bar. Oh, but conveniently, it's actually there. That's actually really nice. Normally, this is an issue, uh, but it's not. Sweet. Uh, a lot of times, you have to add the vehicle bar back. Yeah, 
Any questions so far? Like while I'm running around, just kind of like testing this out. The final thing I'll be doing on here is uh, showing off uh, Bagnon and how to add that. Oh, okay. So we need to adjust our unit frames because we have our name plates, but we do want to use our uh, like unit frames over here. This is a hot mess. So we'll need to clean that up. Rabbit's trying to chew on everything. All right, so let's go into our unit frames. Okay, so we want to go to general, unlock our frames. And they all disappeared because we are in a vehicle, I believe. Okay, that's fine. Let's go get out of the vehicle. Okay. Yep, so everything is back now. That was just because we were in a vehicle. So a couple of things here. We want to find an NPC. Uh, here's one. We can't talk to him, though, so that's unfortunate. Uh, well, we'll find one here in a minute. I think we're actually... We're going to pull the party down a little bit. I like to kind of have the party out to the side there, and then that way my storyline thing will be up here in the corner. And boss frames, I usually just chuck over here. What we'll want to do is look at the chat and kind of make sure we're not covering up the chat. Boss frames don't show up a lot, so I don't worry about them too much. Uh, they mainly only show up in like raids for the most part. Um, so yeah, I just kind of put those up right here. Uh, we could stick them right here if we wanted to, like above. Uh, our chat bar, so they'll show up over there. What else do we have? We have our target frames. So target frames, you can kind of put these wherever you want. Uh, for me, I need to go into weak auras and kind of take a look at this stuff, because what I don't want is I don't want my target to like get and in, interfere with this. I usually put my target like right next to my player health bar since I'm kind of looking over in that area anyway uh, at my own health. And for the most part, I'm going to be looking at the nameplates for tracking health and stuff. But this lets me put uh, that info right over here if I need it. Uh, so that'll cover up. That'll make sure we don't interfere with the weak auras. And then my pets. I usually just check over here if I have one, which I don't. Uh, target of target. Put that out over here. Target of target of target. I never use this. I don't even really use target of target most of the time unless I'm healing. And then focus target I will put over with my pet. Uh, or underneath my player bar. Just kind of depends. Like in this case, I don't have a pet, so I'm not worried about the pet on my Windwalker. So I honestly can just like shove this in the corner and ignore it. Uh, and more likely what I will do is have my focus target here so that when I'm healing, I can have my tank focus target like right there the whole time. Or sorry, not focus target. The focus, this one is the one that I want. And then my focus target, I'll put out this way. And that's pretty much going to cover everything else. I mean, battlegrounds, uh, use it, don't use it. I don't really get into battlegrounds very much. Um, so put that wherever you want. And then I'll go in and use E align to kind of line everything up and make sure it's all spaced out nice and pretty. So I'll do target there. 
do focus there a little bit off target to target focus target and target of target of target now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to turn off uh, some of these. If I can. Oh, enabled units. That's what I want. So under player, I don't need pet. Well, I might need pet for like a random quest, so I'll leave it on there. General target, I don't want target target. I don't really need focus target. I just kind of want these here. Or well, target of target is fine. I don't want target of target of target. That's a little ridiculous. Target of target, I don't even really need that much, uh, but it doesn't hurt to have it on there. I'm going to take it off anyway. Uh, boss is in there. I'm going to go ahead and disable battlegrounds for myself just because I don't really do them. And okay, lock the frames and we will slash a line and we're back. So let's go ahead and go attack one of these things again. Okay, so this thing doesn't really have Yeah, this thing doesn't really have uh it's not showing like there we go, there's a target uniframe. I was just doing like AoE damage. Yep, there we go. We got got our stuff lined up over here. Now on the unit frames, it's kind of up to you. Like you can show um, debuffs or buffs on the like target unit frame, or you can use the name plates, whatever you want to pay more attention to. Hey. Okay. And this is basically just what you do with the UI. You just go out and you kind of, you know, do a world quest, do a normal quest, get into a dungeon, you know, kill some stuff out in the open world. And you just kind of figure out, okay, what do I need to tweak? What do I need to change? What did I overlook? So that is one annoying thing about my setup that I haven't figured out yet is I want to, I think I can just use. What I want to do is move that dialogue panel. If I'm able to. Okay. Info panel. Gossip frame. Nope, it's not the gossip frame. Let's see. Search, uh, pop up maybe. Or maybe dialogue. Oh, 
I'm not sure. I'll have to figure it out. But that's one thing that I want to do is when they talk to you right now, it's over my health bar. And I like to just scooch that down. Like just dropping it down uh, gets it out from being over my health bar. And uh, that kind of was one of the things that I just didn't care too much about before. Uh, enough to like fix it. Because you can still read the dialogue over it anyway. Um, but I would like to get that figured out before uh, I consider this like complete. All right, so we're going back to town. We're going to load up Bartender, and I'm going to kind of show how I would normally set that up. Once again, don't forget to like the video if you're enjoying it. Subscribe if you want more videos, more add-on videos, more class guides. I mean, I'm going to make them anyway, so you do whatever you want. Okay. Really? I am having some major issues with this one action bar. I wonder if it's a conflict with um, immersive. I'll have to check. So what I'll do is I'll I'll probably disable immersive and then see if that affects the move anything. And if it doesn't, then yeah, it's probably just a bug. But that's something to fix. That's part of the add-on process. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop in and turn on bartender. All right, so I personally don't use bartender anymore because I use Opi, and that's mainly just because that's how I handle my hotkeys and my abilities, and I track all my other stuff through weak auras. Uh, you're going to see a couple of things here. So first off, my bars are back, and that's because bartender is kind of taking over. So let's go into... Bartender. Okay, so bartender, when you get in here, you can lock and unlock your bars. Um, and basically, when bartender starts out, it's going to look pretty much like the normal action bars. And uh, what I should probably do, just to make sure this is fine, is let's go ahead and let's disable immersive. And we'll also disable uh, move anything for the time being. And this is going to make my UI look really ugly. So. Work complete. Wasn't too bad. Okay, so bartender, when you get in here, it's going to look pretty much normal. Um, what you're going to want to do is, oh, also, uh, let's see the other thing. I need to disable Aurora. Bartender will work with all these. It's just going to be faster for me to show you uh, how this works without them. Work complete. Okay, now we're looking relatively normal. <laughs> E.T. Okay, so when you get in here, basically all you're going to do is mess with this stuff in the menu here, and you're just going to mess with the bars according to what they are. So Blizzard Art Bar, we can disable that so it goes away. Status Tracking Bar, that's up to you. That is your XP bar. We're not going to use it because we have Experiencer down at the bottom. Zone Ability Bar, you can keep that up. Uh, if there's no Zone Ability, it's not going to show anything. You're going to want to have that somewhere. Um... Same for your vehicle bar, stance bar, pet bar, if you uh, if those are relevant to the class that you're playing. The micro menu is actually this thing here, so you can turn that on or off depending on whether you want to keep it or not. Um, I just use the hotkeys, so I'm just going to turn it off. Your bag bar, you can disable that since we already have arc inventory set up and you don't need to worry about the bag bar. Uh, and Basically, all the principles I show you for these other bars are going to apply to these. So if you do want the bag bar, you can just use those uh, the same stuff for these. 
Now, when you get in here, you're going to have 10 bars available to you and a bunch of them are going to be turned off. So the first thing to do is make sure that the ones you want are turned on or off. So two is not enabled for whatever reason. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it looks like we have all the way through six turned on. Now, the way that I set up bartender is basically the same way that I set up Opie. I have a few different categories for my abilities. So I have my defense spells, my core rotation, my offense spells, my utility spells, my miscellaneous, and my crowd control. So that gives me a total of six different sort of like sections. You may have a seventh one if you want to put like your professions or any of that kind of stuff, uh, but that can also go in the miscellaneous. So I actually want to have seven bars. And what I'll do is I'll go into like bar one. And for bar one, I'm going to come in here and I am going to go in general settings, make sure it's enabled, and then I can adjust the look of the bar here so you can scale the alpha up and down so you can see bar one we're messing with this bar here uh scale so we can make it bigger make it smaller whatever we want to do there so we're just going to leave it the way it is padding can be adjusted the number of buttons can be adjusted so this is going to be my core rotation i'm going to have you know say six buttons here so let's go ahead and turn it down to six and then uh, I can adjust the number of rows. So this just depends with six buttons. I think I'm pretty good to, you know, leave it at six. Um, and you can set your vertical and horizontal growth and your fly out direction if you want to. None of that stuff is overly important uh, at the moment. You can hide your hotkeys if you don't want to see the numbers. You can do click through. Click through will let you click through the ability. It basically makes it kind of like a weak auras bar. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it in the general settings. Visibility. So this is where you can set the fade out to hide in combat. So this is generally uh, I will hide out of combat. So we're going to see this here in a minute. And that's basically it. You can do custom conditionals, but you don't really need to for the way I would set things up. State configuration, not really a big deal here. The one thing we want to get into is positioning. So we want to adjust the positioning here. And we can do this by doing like a zero. And let's do a zero. All right, so wherever the heck the bar went, it's gone. Uh, so let's go ahead and do like negative 250. And oh, actually, what we want to do is center horizontally, center vertically. And then that's going to put this main bar um, in here. And then what I'll do is go ahead and scooch it down. And we're just going to use the. Let's try negative 200. Okay, so we want to go further than that. Go like 250, and we can actually turn on our line here if we want to try to uh, figure exactly where we want to put stuff in. So let's do a 270. Yeah, we really need to jump this up to like 370. Okay, so that is maybe where I would put my core rotation, right? Is right here underneath my, you know, main bar. And then I'm going to go in and go back and actually tweak the scale down to maybe. Maybe like a point seven five and go back over to positioning and center horizontally and that's in there. Then for visibility, I'm going to go in and do hide out of combat. And now my action bar is there, uh, but it's only going to show up in combat. And if you have something that you want to show uh, all the time, you just wouldn't check that.
So for example, you may set up a bar that has all your professions and stuff like that, and you can set it to hide in combat instead of out of combat. But now, once I go here, I have my bars and everything. Um, so I can just use my abilities from here like a normal action bar if I wanted to. And the general way that I'll set this up is I will go back in. And I will, that's my main bar. So the next bar that I would do is like my defensive cooldowns. So I come into bar two and I would, we'll set the scale to 0.75. We're gonna have three buttons. Uh, maybe one row is gonna be good. And vertical growth down, horizontal growth right. That's totally fine too. Uh, positioning, we're gonna center this again. And it doesn't have any uh, abilities on it, which is why it's not showing up. There we go. Okay, so I would have these like core defensive abilities. And then at that point, what I would do is get into my weak auras. And let's go to cooldowns. And let's set these to load all the time so we can see them. And then over here, I would change the positioning. To kind of match it up with, you know, this area over here as well. So it's kind of up to you. Like you really can set the positioning up wherever you want. Um, I didn't design this UI with the action bars in mind. So it really just kind of comes down to what you want to do with it. But you can set this up however you think it makes sense and then have your bars there. The other thing you could do is also just go to like a single bar and you can take that single bar and you can get the maximum amount of buttons on it and maybe tweak it to like two rows and just have a clump of abilities here or you can tweak it to three rows. Uh, what I used to do a lot of the time before I started using Opie was something like make groups of like six to nine buttons that had different themes and just put them all out here in a row. Uh, so I would go to like bar three, 12 buttons, maybe like two rows, bar four, do two rows, bar five, two rows, bar six, two rows and bar seven, two rows. And so what I would do instead is I would take each of these action bars and I would fill them up. And let's say, let's adjust that. Let's make, make these three rows. All right. So with three rows here, I would come in Let's change the scale. All right, I would take this group of buttons and then I would just this drives me a little nuts sometimes. Do like 250 and then whatever the Y offset for this is, negative 370, right? Okay, that made it disappear. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so now I have like a group of buttons here, a group of buttons here, and I could take another uh, set of buttons Just add some more stuff in this one. Yeah, 
Okay, so whichever one this one is. Yep. And kick this up to three rows. And once again, we'll go back into positioning and we will center horizontally, center vertically. And we'll do our negative 370. And then I will look at action bar one is at 95. Action bar six is at 250. So maybe we'll crank this one up. Uh, we'll use uh, our align tool. And we want roughly equal spacing. So let's drop it down to like 75. That's getting closer. So maybe like 65. Something like that. So now, oh, these aren't centered horizontally anymore. Thanks. There we go. Okay, so we'll come back into bar seven, I believe. Or six, and we'll adjust this one. So then you could use this as your action bars and you can uh, you can make them all the same size. You can make big ones, small ones, whatever you want to do. But basically with bartender, that is that's what I would do with that. And like I said, go back in and on the bars that you're using. So we're using six. Uh, we want to hide out of combat. We're using number one. Hide out of combat. And then we're also using one of these other ones. Not seven. Yep. And go back into our weak auras and turn our cooldown load back to in combat. And yeah, that would be the action bar setup. And then you would just hotkey like you would any normal action bar. And then you've got your bars down there. Obviously, in this case, you know, this is where I would have gone into combat and been like, oh, I kind of screwed this up. Uh, let me push all this stuff down or let me, you know, change it so that my target is uh, the buffs aren't getting in the way of the action bar. Yeah, that's how you would do stuff for bartender. So I'm going to come back in and we're going to re enable Anora, Aurora. <laughs> that was not the word that I meant to say. Keep that stuff going. Arc inventory, we're good. Get rid of bartender, because I'm not using that. Put immersive back in. Add back in, move anything. We're gonna make sure all our other stuff is good to go and reload. See if this broke the action bar. Work complete. Yeah, I still get the hovers. It's just on the action bars, too. It's interesting. So that's a bug I'll have to figure out as I go, along with moving the dialog box as well. Right now, just doing this sorts it out. And they're gone. So that's it. That is the rest of the stream. That is... The final version of the second part that is building my UI from scratch. It only took like six hours with explaining. It takes less time, way less time without me you know, like trying to explain it and show examples. Uh, but it still takes a pretty significant amount of time. So I just really wanted to show this off like me building so that you could get a lot of detail about whatever, you know, add on or whatever aspect you're looking at. I know it's a long stream, but I mean, it's a uh, it's a super in-depth educational stream. And uh, I also just wanted to show you like UIs don't come together in three minutes. If you want a three minute UI, 
that uh, you can't customize the living crap out of and make it look super cool in the way you want it to look, um, just get LVUI. Uh, it's not a bad add-on interface. I used to use it all the time. Uh, I just really wanted to make my own thing. I got tired of panels and info and bars and chat boxes and everything being all over my screen. And eventually at some point I just went, you know, I want to be able to get out there and look, look at everything on the screen and not have my screen just covered in UI. And I found that the best way for me to do that was to make my own custom UI um, through this method, which took a while to figure out, took a while to kind of perfect, but I really like where it has ended up uh, at this point. There's still some kinks for me to figure out, to sort out. Um, but yeah, when I have this interface going, I just feel way more immersed in the game than when I don't. Um, lets me stay focused on the action. Uh, lets me take in all the great scenery. This is the kind of UI that when you get on a flight path, it's just awesome uh, to have. Because you get to just see so much. So like if we hop on here and I don't know, let's go down here. Like this is awesome. Like there's no UI anywhere. Like my head on the stream right now is taking up more space than like the rest of my UI is. Uh, and that is actually really awesome. So uh, that's going to do it. That's going to finish it up for building my UI. There will be updates for Shadowlands, I'm sure. But this is the basis that I'm going to be using um, for the foreseeable future. Uh, there may be new add-ons and stuff. Uh, one big thing is I mentioned yesterday that I have some add-ons that I use when I am leveling that I don't use when I'm maxed out. And I have some add-ons that I use when I'm maxed out that I don't use when I'm leveling. Um, so that'll be a big part of uh, the like video updates for Shadowlands and stuff is talking about like, hey, here's some great questing add-ons that you should use and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, but that's a way is off. Shadowlands is not coming until at least Q4 this year. So we got a ways to go in the meantime. Hopefully you can use these videos to experiment and work on creating your own UI. All right, I'm going to hop off here and uh, get myself a break before I got to go in and go to work. Uh, I will see you guys back. I'll let you know when the next stream is once I get it all figured out. And uh, yeah, hope you're having fun in whatever it is that you're doing. As always, I'll see you on the next video.